Hey everybody, welcome to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Time for another movie review. Tonight's movie, Echo Boomers. I found it while uh, perusing DirecTV's movies. Never heard of it before, but it's out. So I thought I'd check it out. It's a true story based on five college buddies who I believe they graduate college and then decide that they want to take matters into their own hand because um, they're not they're fed up with the economy. So they start in Chicago, start stealing from the rich and giving to themselves. Sounds kind of interesting. True story. I like things based on a true story. It has Michael Shannon in it, which is awesome. It has, um, uh, what's his name? Alex, I don't know, I, is it Pettifier? He's in it. You know, he's in a couple of different things. Um, they're the two that I recognize. It's 5.8 on IMDb, but only 58 people so far, or four, I'm sorry, 5.8, only 56 people. 46 people have rated it so far. So, whatever. Sorry. Um, what is it? An hour and some odd minutes long? Hour and 34 minutes long. So, I'm going to get into it here. Find out what it's really about. Give you a better idea. And ultimately, let you know what I think. So, stick around. Could be good. Hey, everybody. I want to do a quick check-in. We're watching Echo Boomers. It's the 50-minute... 53 second mark. I wasn't really going to do a check in, but when I paused it and I saw that number, I'm like, 53, 53, let's do it. So it is kind of what it says, um, but basically, so Lance is like the, uh, I think he's the main character, maybe not, but um, he um, gets recruited to come to Chicago. His cousin lives there, Jack, and he invites him out and says he's got a job for him in the art. Um, industry and Lance had just graduated from college with an art degree 3.8 whatever um, and it's a very similar story to the other five in the group um, yeah I think there's five yeah so there's six total five in the group right and so they all went to college did what they were supposed to do racked up a lot of uh, debt and loans and student loans and can't get a job and that's his problem nobody can get a job and this is the whole generation problem and this is kind of the foundation that this entire movie is built on um, is that millennials can't get jobs but they have all this debt um, and so with that being said this group decides that they're gonna go out and they're gonna rob and they're gonna steal but they're also gonna vandalize and tear apart the houses and make them feel better so that's what they do it's run by Alex uh, uh, Pedophile? <laughs> I don't know why he'd say his name. Um, but he's like the main ringleader of this group. Um, Lance comes in. He's the guy who moved into Chicago. Uh, initially, he doesn't want any part of it. You know, he gets kind of thrown into wolves, and they're like, he's like, no, I don't want any of this. Jack convinces him to stay. He sticks around, and he starts buying into it. And here's my one problem. As soon as that happens, and it's like, okay, great. Lance is in. Everybody's happy. In like the next scene, Jack now wants to leave the group. He wants to get out and do something else. And it's like, they didn't give that amount of time where everybody's having a good time. Like, you know, they go to one club and that's it. It's not like, you know, how it builds up and stuff like that. They didn't create that kind of depth to the group. But anyway, so that's going on. The cousins are like, Lance, the new guy, wants to stay. Jack wants to go. Um, Alex um, and his character, he is dating the one girl. And the girl is from... Um, uh, it's not small. Uh, what was it? Uh, Riverdale. Sorry. She is from Riverdale. Her name is Haley Law. So uh, she was also in spon uh, Spontaneous. Um, anyway, sorry. But she's in this. They're dating. Now, she's had enough. She's met with some old friends of hers, and uh, she realizes she might be missing out on some of her potential. So there's a lot of um, unrest in the group and a lot going on. Turmoil, if you will. Uh, the other members are okay. But that's where we are. So their, their vandalism and stuff like that is creating a mark on them. So they realize that all these houses are being robbed and vandalized by the same group. They don't know who that group is yet, but it's increasing their chances of getting caught. Michael Shannon plays the fence, I'd say, uh, or the fencer, if it's, you know, he's whatever. He's the one who accepts all the stolen goods and flips them for money. So he pays them. Um, and that that's really where it is right now so they're they're meeting with him and, and selling him they're going they're going to the house stealing stuff taking it to him and he's reselling it so um, pretty interesting so far nothing over the top uh, one issue that I had with the lack of development in the 
and the fun part of the group and it goes right into turmoil but uh, we'll see where it goes from here it's an hour and 34 minutes long exactly um, so we're well over halfway but stick around we'll see what it's like at the end I'll give you a better idea um, and give you my thoughts all right I'll be back Hey everybody, read the credits of Echo Boomers and it was good, not great. Um, I was hoping for a little bit more. I mean, it wasn't bad. I'll start backwards and move forward a little bit. So, if you haven't seen me, any of my movie reviews before or movie reviews about true stories, um, there are two things that I always like in, in true story. One is at the end, I want to know what has happened since the movie. I love the you know, right before the credits where it says, this is what happened, and you know what I mean? It, it, it helps, you know, add weight to the story. And I also like pictures or videos of the actual real people. I like to compare them to the actors and see what they kind of look like and see what the person was behind everything. Those two pieces were missing in this. So, one, it knocks it down the rating scale for me, of course, and it also makes me question the validity of the story. Um, obviously all these stories that are told you know, that are based on real life are, are you know embellished of course but now I don't know even in the beginning when they're going this is a true story if you believe it or something like that it said at the beginning and I was like huh so I'm sure there's some part of this that is true but without those pieces at the end you're left to wonder so knock down on that one two um, it becomes pretty predictable in, in the end, um, you can kind of see it all coming, right? Uh, at least I, I think so, which is okay. Three, I know I'm saying all the bad things about it. Three, the lack of enjoyment development, I'll say. So I mentioned this and when I first checked in. They didn't give it the opportunity to show them enjoying themselves. Sure, they show them going to the club and drink champagne. That's it. It's not like somebody goes out and buys a Maserati and is driving around and having a good time, or you know what I mean, or, or they're you know going wherever and doing whatever, spending their money, buying houses, anything along those lines. No, um, they're not doing any of that with their money. They're playing poker with each other. Is really all they show. And and while that's okay, I get it's an hour and a half movie. They don't want to have a lot of that stuff in there. They've got to show that. They've got to show how much they, you know. But maybe. You know, as I think about it, the, maybe that's not the joy for them. The joy is the vandalism and not so much the stealing. And if that's the case, why steal anything, you know? So I'm not going to put any weight behind that. And there's that thought that just came to my head because they can just go vandalize the houses and go away and not steal anything. They do that part for the money. Um, but they don't do anything with it. So, you know... At least they should have built that out here a little bit to show where they were going with it. Um, but, you know, otherwise, I liked it. I, I like the, uh, I, I like Alex Petrifier. I think he's a pretty good actor. He plays his typical role in this. The typical role where he's the leader, but he's like, um, you know, the, the alpha male, the, but the untrustworthy, I say what goes, it's all up to me. I get the most money out of all of this kind of role, you know. But and he is good in that role. He plays it in a lot of different movies. Um, kind of the jerk. Um, the other ones I don't really know, except for of course that girl. Uh, I forget what her name was, but she plays on Riverdale. But otherwise, I thought the acting was pretty good. Um, I like the concept, obviously based on a true story. Um, you know, and, and and I did feel like you you kind of want to root for them. You want them to win. You want them to not get caught you know, quit and go and enjoy their lives kind of thing. So so if it makes you feel like that, then you kind of kind of like the characters, right? So so it had potential there. Um, again, not knowing if this is really a true story. If it was, I'm sure they didn't want to veer too far from it, but I don't know. Kind of like a, almost like a point break. Yeah, I think about it with the masks. They wore the presidents. These guys wore skeleton masks. They're all friends. Whatever. Um, I don't know. Just came to mind as I looked. So that's what I got for you. I mean, I think it's worth a watch if you like heist movies, you know. Um, I like the idea they tie it into the millennial theme and the fact that they can't get jobs. 
Uh, I do like that. There's potential here. I think it could have been a little bit longer. Throw me another 15 minutes in there. And I'll go back and I'll pull out the pieces that we don't need because there are a couple pieces and throw in some of the pieces that we do need. A little bit more enjoyment development, I think, is the big thing for me. So there you go. And don't make it as predictable. There you go. That's all I got for you. Check it out. Let me know what you thought. Love to hear your thoughts. Drop me a line. Um, hit the like button. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Tell all your friends, of course. And more importantly, continue to come back to Kimmel's Irish Pub. Thanks.